Hello folks, it's Jim Hansen sitting in for Frank Gaffney, and welcome to Secure Freedom Radio. You know, it's somewhat comical to watch the press shift from loyal lapdogs and palace scribes to the empress-in-waiting Hillary Clinton back into rabid attack dogs foaming at the mouth and attacking every act of President-elect Donald Trump, even making up acts when the outrage meter isn't cranked up far enough for him. The latest faux horror is a Muslim registry where Trump will supposedly require all Muslims in the U.S. to be cataloged and then placed under surveillance. Well, wrong. That is not the case nor should it or would it ever be the case. But when the point is demagoguery and political propaganda, our media and the left have zero compunction about lying and misleading the American public. So they're doing their unhinged best to paint the nascent Trump administration as a bunch of jackbooted Nazi thugs saying, your papers please, to anyone looking at all Muslimy. You know, I said it was comical, But really, these attacks on the new administration are dangerous because they take common sense measures and slime them with vile slurs like racist and Islamophobic. If we allow them to be successful in this, they actually make all of us less safe. So we are forced time and time again to stand athwart the stream of spittle-flecked craziness yelling, stop. Now, what is actually being proposed is a return to the use of a Bush-era tool called National Security Entry-Exit Registration System. This is a system that says if you come from areas where there is a large preponderance of enemies of the United States, you get extra scrutiny when you come here. That's it. It is imposed only on non-citizens who wish to visit the U.S. on a non-immigrant visa. So no late-night knocks on doors of Muslim families to randomly round them up for questioning. No warrantless surveillance based only on religion. Nothing more than taking a good look at those who come from places our enemies dominate. Now, it's worth pointing out that entry to the United States is a privilege, not a right. Those who want to come here have the obligation to prove to us they deserve it. We don't have to prove they don't. Under existing U.S. law, the president has the authority to ban entry by anyone, anytime, for any reason. That authority has been used by the last six presidents in some way to keep the country safe. The law also says that members of any totalitarian group which advocates overthrow of the U.S. government or the Constitution can be banned outright. Now, there are plenty of Islamic supremacists who openly admit they want to install Sharia law worldwide. Those people have no business being given any opportunity to come here and try that garbage. We wrote a policy paper on that, which you can find if you Google Center for Security Policy and Stop Importing Jihadists. As Frank says, we don't need any more. We've got plenty. Now, what is painful is the idea that this is in any way controversial. It's not an attack on all Muslims. It's an attack on those who contemplate an attack on our very way of life, our freedoms, and even our lives. We owe them nothing. And keeping an eye on those who want to come here from areas controlled by people like that is simply a minimum level of due diligence by our government. Now, this was starkly and painfully demonstrated by the fact that a number of the 9-11 jihadist scum were here on visas that they overstayed. We saw how that turned out. We currently still have no systematic way to track those who come here on a tourist or student visa and simply don't leave. It was painful to watch official 
after official of the Obama administration testifying that they have absolutely no clue how many people have overstayed their visas and worse yet, really no interest in finding out. And it's not much better for those who apply to come here as immigrants or refugees. The female San Bernardino terrorist came on a spouse visa and even a cursory look at her background and the false information on her application should have stopped her entry or at least flagged her for a closer look. Instead, she got waved right through and 14 people died and 22 more were wounded. Now, as far as refugees, there is a desire in all decent people to help those affected by war and the barbarities of groups like ISIS. But that doesn't mean the answer should be, well, let's bring them all here. That makes no sense. And as the FBI director has said, we have absolutely no way to tell the innocents from the jihadists because there are no records in Syria to check them against. You cannot vet people by asking them, um, excuse me, if we let you come here, are you going to be slaughtering any infidels in the name of Allah? Somehow I think that will fall short of a decent standard of vetting. And again, there is no right to come here, so perhaps we should be focused on helping these people where they are. For the cost of relocating one refugee to the United States, we can help a dozen in the region. That makes a heck of a lot more sense to me. So let me be clear. None of this is about singling out Muslims for unfair or unconstitutional scrutiny. It's not even about U.S. Muslims at all. It's about making sure that before we let anyone into this country, we ensure to the best of our ability and within the laws we have established that they aren't a threat. And those very laws contemplate forbidding entry to anyone with an interest in threatening our freedoms for any reason, whether ordained by their God or whatever. You are not invited. And if you come from an area where large numbers of your co-inhabitants share this desire, then we have every right to keep a weather eye on you if we decide to even allow you to come here. <laughs> you should be thankful you got the opportunity, not whinging because you may have to answer a few questions. This is not a case where, as Ben Franklin warned, they that can give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. This is a case where protecting those essential liberties requires looking at how our safety may be affected by allowing those who don't share our values to come here. I, for one, expect President Trump to do just that to place the safety and security of all Americans above some non-existent right of anyone else to come to these shores. And even more so, I expect him to look at our entire broken immigration system and far too open borders and do something to fix that. Somehow I feel there's a pretty good chance of that happening. Now this will certainly generate howls of outrage from the usual suspects, but we must stand up for the new president, the country, and our fellow citizens, Muslims included, against threats from all enemies, foreign and domestic. If you want to catch more of this and my shorter and pithier opinions, you can find me on Twitter. My handle there is Uncle Jimbo. Up next, after the break, we're going to be talking to the Center for Security Policy's Fred Flights. He has been watching the Iranian nuclear program since his days back at CIA and has kept a serious eye on the shortcomings of the Iran deal and how it has made us all less safe. We'll be back with Fred and more Secure Freedom Radio after the break. Convoy of PTRs with dealer 5.